In this video we demonstrate how to sample a blood culture via an open system from a newly inserted peripheral catheter to avoid an additional vena puncture. As soon as a catheter has been used or if it was already in place, this procedure cannot be performed due to the risk of a contaminated blood culture. By using an open system, no vacuum is applied to the veins. So this technique is reserved for young children and neonates with veins that are too small for direct blood aspiration. Normal conditions, there are no bacteria in the blood. However, in case of severe infections, Bacteria may be present in the blood and cause bloodstream infections. To identify these bacteria, blood is sampled in a blood culture bottle and cultured in a liquid medium. However, bacteria are also present on the human skin and in the environment. If these bacteria enter the blood culture bottle during sampling, the blood culture bottle will be contaminated with bacteria that do not originate from the patient's blood. These bacteria will multiply during the incubation and cause false positive results. To avoid blood culture contamination and obtain good quality results, blood must be sampled according to specific blood culture sampling procedures which are demonstrated in this video. In neonates, Signs and symptoms of bloodstream infection are non-specific. For blood culture sampling indications, we therefore refer to our procedure in which we list danger signs associated with severe neonatal infections, signs of severe bacterial infection and perinatal risk factors for neonatal sepsis as indications for blood culture sampling. To sample a blood culture, you need a blood culture request form, a permanent marker and a pen, an alcohol-based hand wrap and minimum one pair of non-sterile gloves. For disinfection, you need a timer, five dry compressors per blood culture set and two disinfectants. We prefer to use 70% isopropyl alcohol for the first step of skin disinfection and disinfection of the blood culture bottle and holder, and to use 2% chlorhexidine gluconate in 70% isopropyl alcohol as a second step for skin disinfection. For blood culture sampling, you need a tourniquet, you need an IV catheter and its lock, tape to fixate the catheter, a sterile 2 ml syringe, a 23 gauge needle. Finally, we need a rack for blood culture bottles, and a rack to hold a syringe, a dry, non-sterile compress to stop the bleeding after vena puncture, a sharps container and a biohazard container. We strongly recommend positioning of all materials at the side of the dominant hand to avoid crossover of the arms during the procedure. Once you have arranged your workplace, you can start the procedure. Check if the blood culture is not expired. Then check the patient's identity by asking his name, age and gender. Indicate your volume of blood you need to sample per blood culture bottle. Inform the patient or his caretaker about the procedure while you disinfect your hands with alcohol-based hand wrap before you touch the patient. Position the patient and look for an appropriate venipuncture site. Clean the patient's skin at the puncture site with 70% isopropyl alcohol. Apply vigorous friction. If the wipe is visibly soiled, repeat with another wipe until the wipe is clean. Wait for 30 seconds to 1 minute to allow the alcohol to dry. Meanwhile, you can remove the caps from the blood culture bottles and place the bottles in rack. Disinfect with 70% isopropyl alcohol the rubber septum of each bottle. Now disinfect the puncture site again with 2% chlorhexidine gluconate in 70% isopropyl alcohol. Apply vigorous friction again and wait 30 seconds to 1 minute 
to allow the alcohol to dry. Do not touch the puncture site anymore during the rest of the procedure. Put on gloves. Unwrap a 2ml syringe and a capped 23 gauge needle from their package and connect them in a sterile way. Put them aside in a rack. Open the package of the catheter lock but leave it inside to keep it sterile. If you want to use a tourniquet, fasten it now. Unwrap a catheter from its package. Puncture the vein with the catheter, but do not touch the puncture site. If you have touched the puncture site, repeat antisepsis before proceeding. Once you're in the vein, lift the catheter over the needle into the vein. Take a dry sterile compress and put the compress under the needle on the skin of the patient. Withdraw the needle completely and discard the needle directly in the sharps container. If the catheter insertion failed, use a new sterile catheter and a new puncture site and repeat the procedure from antisepsis onwards. Stabilize the catheter with a small tape during the whole procedure. But make sure the compress does not touch the catheter hub. Take the 2ml syringe with attached needle. Carefully insert the needle in the catheter hub and aspirate blood via the needle from the hub. Aspirate blood until you have collected the volume required for the age of the child. If you have used the tourniquet, release it. Press on the vein just above the puncture site to stop the blood flow. You can directly inoculate the blood culture bottle with a blood filled syringe with attached needle. Make sure that the blood culture bottle is put in a rack and do not hold the blood culture bottle by hand when you inoculate it. Carefully puncture the septum of the blood culture bottle. The blood will flow in the blood culture bottle. If necessary, you can now take other blood samples for additional laboratory analysis. Connect the catheter to the infusion set or lock it with a cap and attach the catheter to the skin of the patient using adhesive tape. Meanwhile, your syringe will be empty. Move the syringe and needle from the blood culture bottle and throw them directly in the sharps container. Take the blood culture bottle out of the rack and mix it gently Put it back in the rack. Remove your gloves and disinfect your hands with alcohol-based hand wrap. Identify now the blood culture bottles with the patient's name, the patient hospital number, the date and time of blood collection and the sampling site. Complete now the blood culture request form with the date and time of sampling, the type of bottles, your initials and any relevant comments. Peel off the barcodes of the blood culture bottles and paste them on the request form. Check if the bottles are labeled correctly and transport the bottles immediately to the laboratory. Keep the transport time as short as possible and maximum four hours. If the transport is not immediate, keep the blood culture bottles in the dark and at room temperature and never store them in the fridge.